Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Art of War guide series where we talk about everything battle related for Total War Three Kingdoms. For this week's episode, we're going to be talking about a defensive exploit that I have often used in some of my Let's Plays, and it's called looping. Now this is exploit and definitely a cheese strategy, so I know there are those of you who dislike these type of strategies to be used in a historical game such as Total War Three Kingdoms, but in all honesty I believe all these strategies are player choice, it's kind of allowed by the game mechanic. Sure, there's a few mechanics that could be patched up in the future or changed in terms of game design to make things uh, more tight in terms of strategy and not using something like having three generals defeat an army that we're showing on the right. But regardless, it's an option for the players to use, and even if you're a strict follower of the no cheese policy, perhaps you'll find yourself in a pickle sometime, and you might want to pull this one out, because you can definitely use one general, two generals, or three generals, defend any sort of town or any unwalled settlements with towers, or perhaps a resource settlement with towers to defeat armies like the one we're showing here. Now. The map that we're going to be using here is a Italian resource map in the city of Hue. Now, it won't be a city build, it will be at most a large town. The reason why I picked Hue, which is the capital of the Ye commandery, is, or actually, it's the capital of the Wei commandery, it's the city of Ye. There we go. It's because it's a very evenly designed town, right? It's a square with multiple towers at each side, so it's pretty balanced. Now obviously the map could change depending on where you pick, uh, but this is the one we're gonna go with to showcase this. We are gonna be doing this on 40 minute battle timer. You could play on 20, you could play on 60, you could even play on unlimited. It wouldn't do you, uh, you know, it wouldn't make the change very much. Unlimited might cause some issues if the enemy has fire arrows or siege weapons. Because in that case, they can eliminate all the towers, therefore drain you of all your damage and force you into a unending loop where neither of you could win, but you technically can't lose either. Uh, but that's a tough situation. I usually play with battle timers, so in that case, as a defender, once the clock hits zero, you get a draw. And technically as a defender, I take that as a win. So that's kind of the setting we're going with. We're doing very hard because uh, there's no legendary here in custom battle. That's okay. The only change between very hard and legendary is the AI will get extra stats. I mean, very hard gets extra stat already, but legendary get even more extra stats. In this case, we're never really engaging the enemy. Therefore, it's not going to make a difference at all. Uh, the setup and AI behavior is the same once you move beyond hard. So the archers will not shoot at your generals as long as you have your own retinues. Uh, but in this case, we're not even going to have our own retinue because I don't think in custom battle they will give you a garrison for the town that you're in. Um, but we'll see. So that's pretty much it about the concept. We use three generals. I picked these three because each of them represent something. Sun Jian here represent holding on an item that gives unbreakable. This also applies to skills as well as traits. For example, the stubborn trait would also give unbreakable. There is a skill in the commander skill tree that gives unbreakable. If you have an unbreakable character, it's very good for this strategy because they will never lose morale due to army loss or being outnumbered by the enemy. Because if you lose your morale, you can loop all you want, your generals just route away from the battlefield and you lose that fight. So Sun Jian represents someone who can gain Unbreakable. Lu Bu also has Unbreakable on his weapon, but that's not the reason why I picked him. The reason why I picked him is that Vanguard generals have really fast speed because they have access to the mobility skill. Now Commanders also has that, but Lu Bu has a very good horse in the red hair. So you can see his top end speed goes to 137, and compare that with Sun Jian with only 90, it's pretty clear. If you want to loop the enemy, you want fast speed. So honestly, you don't really want a heavy horse like the Heavenly Fire. You want something like a common horse with 97 base speed instead of the 80 base speed here. And then you get a little boost from your other stats and you'll be a very fast general. Because if you look at the enemy cavalry, they're around 90 something speed usually. Uh, we pick slightly heavier versions for them. If they have the militia unit, it's probably 109 speed. Um, but that's something to make note of. 
Liu Bei here represents the commander class. Also really fast horses because Di Lu happens to be the fastest horse in the game alongside Cao Cao Shadowrunner. So Cao Cao is 144 speed here. Very crazy because he has other boosts as well. Uh, Liu Bei is 131. And the reason why we picked a commander is because commanders can gain access to Unbreakable, making them very good for this strategy. And commander has this skill, Nature's Ally, which gives everyone around them 25% extra speed and extra morale and ignore forest penalties. So if there's forest outside your town and you need to run through it without getting caught, this will be the perfect thing to use. So we're just gonna grab these three. They all happen to have unbreakable. So even though we don't get a retinue of garrison units to hide on the map, to give us the slight edge in terms of not being outnumbered or not being army lost, uh, we're not gonna have that. So having three generals with unbreakable will kind of mimic that. So let's jump into the battle and uh, face off with this pretty mighty army. Eight pretty elite cavalry, eight infantry, all shielded, and the pesky spear guards where we can't kill them with the general, and then two crossbowmen just to symbolize range. Uh, I purposely didn't give them archers because then he would have fire arrow. We want to avoid that situation. So let's hop into battle and showcase how we do looping properly. Alrighty, so here we are. Uh, this is a very nice town actually, uh, in Wei here, or in Ye, Wei is the command rename. They split up their force, which is very common when they outnumber you. And what you want to do, uh, as you can see, we don't get any garrison in the city, but if you have garrisons, which you often should, only level one towns do not have garrisons. You want to put your garrisons as far away from the enemy forces as possible, right? Their forces are split like this, you put them here. And then the first command you're going to give is have them run. Run as far as they can, and then if you have forests, hide in the forest. If you don't have forests, go to the corner of the map. If you see elevation dips where the elevation dips down, hide them in the ditch because then the AI can't see them, or technically they shouldn't be able to see them as long as you offer them something visible, which is our three generals who are fast. And the three generals need to charge out at the enemy. Now, we don't wanna like suicide into a crossbow because they will shoot us because we don't have any red news. If we had red news, then you can do that. Then it wouldn't harm you at all. And the goal, uh, no barricades, we keep the inside clean and pristine, is to just try to keep them outside and let your towers do the damage. The key here is because A, inside any town and resource maps, the capture point is just a capture point. It's not a victory point. When they hold this, you lose 10 points of morale. That's it. They don't win the game. There is no timer that comes up and win the battle. So you can afford to leave your town undefended. And the second thing is, even though towers have been nerfed a lot since launch, at launch, towers were insane. They are still insane, right? And you have overlapping towers in most town setups, usually very dense on the outside. Here we have six towers on each side, very evenly distributed. They hurt a lot and they don't require any attention. They will always fire the enemy. So we're gonna use them as our main weapon and we just wanna grab the enemy AI's attention. We can do this on three times speed and you don't want them to go into the town. But if they happen to go into town, it's not the end of the world, right? See, they're trying to chase you. You want them to gather up. You don't want to engage them. You don't want to get close to them. The fact that the AI has infantry is a blessing for you because this way the cavalry will not just like endlessly chase you, even though he's really slow. All right, gotta kite a little. That's why speed is key. Heavenly fire is not a blessing on this map. They will try to group up together, right? Make a cool little formation. All at the same time, they're getting picked off. You can see he's dying one by one. And uh, once we get our guys together, we just want to try to draw their attention and they'll slowly march towards you. See that? Because they want to maintain a beautiful looking formation. Salt's already lost half his health to the towers. The cavalry will not just charge out at you. You don't want to give them that opportunity. You just want to kind of kite them around the edges. Let them walk within the shots. Don't go too far ahead, because if you do, they start taking the shortcut through the city. And if you are really good at microing, or you don't mind microing a bit more, you can split your generals across the map and hide them in the tree line. If you have tree line. Here, we don't have that option. We have the speed advantage, so we don't have to worry about it. 
but let's say we don't have the speed advantage, but there's trees. You want to launch out your generals maybe in three directions, hide them in the tree, and only show them one at a time. So in that case, for example, let's say we're hiding in this tree, and there's generals hiding there, there's general hiding there, they're chasing one of you, you pop out, they chase that guy. But then when they get close, you hide him, and then you pop out another guy on the other side, and they turn around, and you just loop. Sometimes the map has a river where you don't have four sides, so you might think, well, how do I loop against that? Well, I'll show that very soon. So let's assume this side is a river and we can't physically loop through. So first we want them to make this turn. We don't want them to turn too tightly. So we want to draw them out. They have a very, very big line here. So here they are, right? They're trying to get us. We, we ran to a river. Oh, now we're in trouble. We're caught in the river. So what do we do? You go really, really far this way and you loop this way. That's it. Sure, they will leave the shots for a little bit, and uh, he's in trouble because he's just really slow. Uh, we might just hide him in the forest, and then let them continue. And then you loop back. And if they don't have cavalry, where they can't really catch you at all, there's like no threat of them catching you, you can just do figure eights around them in one side of the wall. Let's say you have one side that has a lot of towers and you want to keep them on this side, you can literally just like run them like this do an oval around one side instead of looping across all four sides. If you get too close, they issue a charge command. Remember, units get faster when they're charging at something. There's a charge speed bonus. So you don't want to let them issue that command because if they can't issue that, they'll just march together and they'll always try to maintain formation, therefore lowest speed. If a general dies and there's relationships, the other two might enrage and chase after you. That's a dangerous time. So you kind of want to time that. But unless they're unbreakable, which in this case only Cao Cao is unbreakable, they usually route once they take enough damage. But yeah, hide your slow generals. And during this whole time, your town retinue is just hiding. Don't show them. They don't have a chance in looping. But your generals do. So let's say there's a river here. We'll just kite around. So here having faster speed, having fatigue resistance or fatigue immunity are all very good. You see they're just stuck here with you. Now there's some trees here so it's not actually ideal. They're like you want to loot them to a side where it's easy to kill them. And that's it. You can, you can see where this is going. They're all going to die. And even the timer goes to zero and they don't all die, well guess what? They're stuck with you. You got the draw, they can try to take you on again and you'll wipe them. All right, we'll just finish this out by looping them a couple more time. But as you can see, they really have no shot. And even if they have, let's say, a fire arrow unit, um, what you want to do early on is find the side they're on. That side of the town will likely get burned. You can't stop that. But as long as one side is fine, just, you know, loop them. Well, usually they wouldn't shoot at you. And try to kite them slightly away from town where they're facing you like this and just get them killed doing this where they are pointing towards you instead of the town the town's still hitting them and then eventually they die and then you just need to maintain even two towers is enough right if all of them burn down get the draw and reset do it again because tower will respawn on the next siege um, but this is pretty much looping it's a very very simple strategy and if, let's say, the enemy goes inside, because that's a very common scenario too. As long as we go inside, they'll go inside, right? So, go inside, go inside. They'll start capturing all the towers, right? And you think maybe the strategy is lost. It's not going to be possible anymore. So, here they come. All right, now they're inside. They'll start catching, like, capturing everything. They'll try to get all the towers. They might not even chase you for a while, but you can bait them, right? It looks like they're not going to come out ever again but that's actually not true. Over here we attack, we try to capture stuff. The AI hate the fact that you can recapture stuff. Once they see you recapture, they'll try to chase you, but you gotta maintain the distance. You gotta be careful here. So come chase us, come chase us, come chase us. Once you draw one unit out, the rest will come. Yeah, get that, stop shooting at us. Come on, chase out, chase out. By the way, capture towers do not shoot you. 
they don't betray you. Just because they got captured doesn't mean they'll betray you. Think about it. Oh, I think we might tempt someone. There we go. And they're out. And you just let them come out. Provoke. And looping resumes. Split off your generals so they can capture around the town to get the towers back. Because they'll always group together. So yeah, that's the looping strategy. They stand no chance and uh, you wipe them out pretty easily. And that's a very core principle of how to survive early games when your towns are naturally not walled because you haven't upgraded them yet and you can't afford a real army but you have some decent generals, especially your starting generals, sometimes always a commander. So it's pretty easy to get through this tough period by using strategies like this. Or if you don't enjoy this type of cheese, then don't. Uh, that's pretty much it. So that's it for this week. We'll showcase a couple more of these strategies. I think there's an alternate version to this where you can defend without generals, especially in some resource settlements. Lumberyard in particular is one of those settlements where you can choose to never lose to the AI just with the garrison, simply because you have a lot of forests around, so you can play with vision. So one day we'll showcase that as well. As for now, uh, enjoy the rest of the show as Hosal's army get wiped, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye!